Let's go over the code for the function initialize in Uniswap v3. We're going to encounter some new terms such as square root price x96 and slot 0. Some of them I will explain in this video, others I will explain in another video. This is the code for Uniswap v3 and we'll implement the same functions inside our AMM contract. So I'm going to open our AMM contract, scroll down, and then we'll create a function called initialize. Function initialize. The input for this function is a uint160 named square root price x96. Now what does this variable represent? I'll explain in another video. So for now, we'll just move along. uint160 square root price x96 external. This function initialize will be called after this contract is deployed to set the initial price. And the initial price is somehow related to this variable square root price x96. Looking at the code inside Uniswap v3 pro, the first term that we see that we don't understand yet is called slot 0. What is this variable? Slot 0 is declared up at the top as a struct over here. And then it is declared as a state variable. It is declared as the first state variable. Why is this called slot 0? Well, it's called slot 0 because it uses the 0th slot of the storage. In the EBM, state variables are stored in slots. Each slot can have up to 32 bytes. The first state variable that is declared inside a smart contract, if it fits on the 32 bytes, then that data will be stored in the 0th slot. So this is why this variable is called slot 0. So what is inside slot 0? We have all of this data that is stored in slot 0. So again, I said that each slot can store up to 32 bytes. So let's count this and make sure that this fits into 32 bytes. The first variable is uint160. uint256 is 32 bytes. If you divide 256 by 8, then you get 32. So to convert 160 into bytes, all we have to do is simply divide this number by 8. 160 divided by 8 is 20, so this will be 20 bytes. The first variable, square root price x96, will use up 20 bytes. The next variable, tick, let's divide this by 8 again, so this will use up 3 bytes. The next one is 16, 16 divided by 8 is 2 bytes. And the same for the next variable and the next one. Fee protocol is uint8, so this will be 1 byte. And lastly, boolean will also be 1 byte. Okay, let's count all of the sizes that these data will take up. The first one, 20, plus the next one will be 3, plus the next 1, 2, 3 will be 2 bytes. So this will be 2, plus 2, plus 2. And then plus 1 byte and 1 byte. Plus 1, plus 1. Okay, let's add these up. 20 plus 3 plus 2, 25, 29, 30, and 31. So this is equal to 31 bytes which is less than 32 bytes. So this, all of this data inside slot 0 is stored in the 0th slot. So that is slot 0. Now for our example, we're not going to cover price oracles. So some of the data in here, we will omit it. Okay, so back in our contract, let's also declare slot 0 and then initialize the first state variable to slot 0. So I'll copy all of this and then go back to our contract. And then inside here, I'll declare slot 0 and then initialize a state variable called slot 0. Slot 0 public slot 0. And we also remove some of the comments. We will keep square root price x96, which I will explain in another video. Tick, we already covered. Observation index and observation cardinality and observation cardinality next. These are variables related to the price oracle which we will not cover in this video. Fee protocol, this is the protocol fee, which we will also not cover. So we're left with three variables for our slot zero. Square root price x96, tick, and unlock. Okay, so once we have slot zero declared, our next step is to initialize slot zero inside our function initialize. Let's open the code for Uniswap v3 pool and go back to our function initialize. Okay, here's the function. The first part of this function checks that the function initialize cannot be called more than once. It can only be called once. And this is done by checking that slot zero that square root price x96 is equal to zero. So we'll say require slot 
zero dot square root price x ninety six is equal to zero. With the error message, let's say already initialized. Okay, the next part is to compute the tick from the square root price x96. And this is done by calling the function get tick at square root ratio. How to calculate the tick given square root price x96? We'll cover this in another video. Okay, so int 24 tick is equal to tick math dot get tick at square root ratio. And then inside here, pass in square root price x96. Okay, the next part of the code is a code that's related to the price oracle, so we'll just skip it. And then the last part is to initialize slot 0. So say slot 0 is equal to slot 0 square root price x96 is square root price x96 from the input. Tick is what we computed above. And that's the all of these variables we're not storing inside our slot zero. And the last one that we're storing is unlocked. This variable unlocked is used for reentrancy card. So unlocked true. And the event initialized, we'll just omit it. And that completes the function initialize. Let's try compiling the contract. I'll open my terminal and then type forge build. Okay, our contract compiles. In this video, we completed the function initialize. However, there are terms that I did not explain yet. For example, square root price x96 and how to get the tick given the square root price x96. I'll explain what square root price x96 is and how to calculate the tick given the square root price x96 in another video. So we'll end it here for now and I'll see you in the next video.